Hey everybody, it's Missy Wolf, and we are here at the Dark Horse Studios in Franklin, Tennessee, and we're with John, Michael Ferrari, and Pepper J. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing well. Thank you for having us here. Absolutely. Thank you for making the trip. Oh, beautiful trip. The drive up here is just <laughs> fabulous. If you haven't made it, you got to make it. Right? This yeah. this studio is actually pretty gorgeous. I'm in oh love with gosh. it. I love filming here. Oh, this is great. And you said who recorded here? Neil Diamond? Um, Neil Diamond, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Tim McGraw, all kinds of people. I mean, wow. I could probably go on and on, but you know, we don't have time for that. We, we got to <laughs> talk to you. <laughs> but so, so tell me, you've had some really recent success with an award that you didn't even know you were going to be getting. I, 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 you have to tell everybody at home how, this story because it's fun. I was performing at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Uh, what was it? Peace, Arts for Peace? Yes, it was the Hollywood tribute to the Oscars. It was an Oscar, ga Oscar gala a week or so ago in the International Ballroom. It was a beautiful event. And mm -hmm. I was up there performing and singing uh, just with my guitar mm -hmm. and uh, no band or orchestra, just me and the guitar. And they had this big ceremony and all of a sudden I saw them walking, lady walking towards me with this big trophy and they presented it to me as best peace song of the year. Wow. So I didn't even know. For his song, Like a Rock and Roll Band. Right. And wow, it's all about let's getting together in harmony and mm -hmm. peace. And it was fabulous. International event, fab. So you had no clue you were going to be getting this award. I didn't know. I, I didn't even know I was going to be performing there until <laughs> she told me maybe a week earlier. You know, like they yeah. want you to come and perform. He's on a need to know basis. <laughs> 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 yeah. Too many things are happening. You know what? Then it keeps the reactions right. It yeah. just keeps them really real. Like that. That that had to be just one of the most amazing moments ever. It was, and it was surprising how many people we knew at the event. Well, she knows a lot of people. We go to <laughs> I was gonna all say, these events. A lot Everybody, of you know. <laughs> um, but it was nice. It, it was a, a real treat to be able to be there in mm -hmm. Hollywood, Beverly Hills. And perform in this beautiful ballroom. And during rehearsal, when I came in to rehearse, uh, they had really good sound people there. And I guess most people usually have a band or tracks. And, yeah. and I said, no, it's just me and the guitar. And he goes, oh, okay, that's unusual. And, and that ran easy? <laughs> well, yeah, had easy. To be easy. Well, he that. made me sound good, though. Oh, there he you go. did. Oh, yeah, yeah, Very he did. Very well. Yeah. Very well. That, that's one thing I always hear in town. It's always tip the sound man because yes. they can make your show or break your show. We do that. Yes. yes oh, yeah. Do that. Yeah, we always do that. <laughs> that's great. Now, your, your resume, first of all, for those of you who, who don't know, oh, my gosh, you have done so many amazing things in your career. You know, cinematography and, and just directing. And, I mean, I, I, the list could go on and on and on. You've done every aspect. Have you also done journalism? Music journalism, entertainment journalism? Well, I did a lot of interviews like what you're doing. Yes. You know? But it's funny because when I do these things, I compartmentalize each thing that I do. So if I'm doing directing, they only know me as a director. Or if I'm doing photography, they only know me as a photographer. So even though I'm, I'm doing music, right. a lot of people don't know that. And a lot right. of people didn't even know uh, I sang and played guitar. Yeah, I was working with this uh, uh, a bunch of people in the in the band, and we performed for years together. And I never played guitar. And then one day I picked up the guitar and I started playing and performing. And nobody knew. They go, "I didn't know you played an instrument." And nobody ever asked me. You know? Oh my God, that's so <laughs> funny. That's so funny to be able to like keep that part of you just closed off for in the moment of what you're doing that that isn't related to that or. or that's just crazy to me. That and, yeah, and even I have a recording studio and I do all the the engineering work and and I don't even tell people I do that. You know, just like <laughs> just keep it all separate. You know. That's fun. I mean, if that's if that's what it takes and that's what makes you happy, then obviously don't change what you're doing. I think it's a good thing. You know, but you're here in Nashville because you guys are just re doing some recording and you're working right. on a new project. So tell tell everybody about that. What are you working on? Well, we're working on a uh, CD now, and why don't you tell them a little bit about that? Okay, hi. <laughs> uh, I've been producing John's music for, well, in May it'll be 30 years, and that's I'm amazing. only 35, so I don't know how right, that happened. Right, you, yeah. I mean, you're just a genius. Yes, it's just a child right. prodigy. <laughs> and uh, his album is Be the Smile on Your Face, and mm -hmm. we came to Nashville, and we chose... 
I searched to search and I chose Larry Beard, B E A I R D mm-hmm. Studio in Nashville, and they really took care of us with some fine players and they were quite sure about John and his music in that he doesn't fall into any particular box mm-hmm. well like oh, this is country, this is pop. Really, the genre is John Michael Ferrari, and his his loyalty is to the song, and that's the way I feel also. But it sounds more country now that we've been in the studio (laughs) recording. (laughs) Yeah, it was a fabulous experience. Nashville has a tendency to do that to folks here. We took away our major sevens and no elevens and no diminishes. We kept some some in. They said, we don't play that. We don't play that here. They did real well for us. Yeah. No, it's fun. But the beauty of having a studio at your own home as well is you can also tweak it there and, and you know, make some changes that you feel are more yourself. Right. And, and John plays instruments, so mm-hmm. he can, like, play the piano into it, play the guitar in right. it, you know. And But it's not the same as having just A1 professional players right. at right. every station. Yeah. Right. And uh, you don't want you to give me a little of this in the intro. Okay. It was like all of a sudden it was like magic. Uh, Isn't that great? Yes, I'd like to do that all the time. Yeah. I've, I've been in the studio watching artists record and it's so fascinating to me. And when I just me being able to sit there and watch it, I feel like it's magical. But I cannot imagine what goes through the artist's mind as they're watching their vision, their thoughts, everything just come to fruition, just all of that. Well, it's amazing because at home, it takes me a, 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 few, a day or a couple of days to record a song. Mm-hmm. In the studio here, we did five songs in one, in, in one afternoon. Yeah. I mean, it's fast. They're yeah. fast. And they write out the charts. Uh, they use the Nashville chart system. Uh, they count it off, and they go through it once and maybe twice, and we're right. done. That's, That's awesome. And they're so good. Right. I mean, they're really good. Um, I'm not used to working that fast, but you know, it's like, oh, okay, we're done. All right. They'll, you know. they'll, they'll get as much done in that period of time that you have as possible. I mean, that's their goal is just let's work through it all. Let's get it all done and do it the best that they can. And I mean, yeah. some of these musicians, it's just one take. That's all it takes for yeah. them is one take. And they accommodate what we're looking for. You know, I had certain, I wanted to save some of his transitions, some of his licks, you know, his mm-hmm. phrasing. It was important for me to keep Johnny into the John right. Michael Ron Ferrari songs and and they did that and especially today uh, we recorded Peggy Sue's which is 6 minutes 15 seconds and when he says okay let's move to verse 8 and everybody laughed like who hears verse 8 in Nashville you know (laughs) And, yeah. But it's a story song, and, and they got into it, and they did beautifully. I'm just so pleased. Yeah, that was funny, because they all, when he said, well, let's go to verse 8, and he stopped me and said, when was the last time I ever said verse 8? You know, it's like, we don't have eight, eight verses in a song, and this one yeah. did, you know. That's and uh, six and a half minute song. And they were kind of reluctant, you know. But when we did the song, and everybody got into it. And then when we uh, did a second pass, then everybody did their individual. Give me, let's go back to this bar. Let's go back to this one. I want to add this. I want to change oh, this. Nice. You know, everybody. Yeah. And when we heard it back, I actually started tearing up. Aww. You know, I just it's like, oh my gosh, this is more than we imagined. Yeah. Um, this trip, uh, especially this trip, because we did songs that um, I don't normally perform in, as, uh, mm-hmm. in the club. And uh, they turned out so much better than we thought they would. Oh, that's you know? fantastic. Because our songs are like our babies, right. you know, and, and, and they're all from personal experience or experiences that he observed mm-hmm. that others had. And, and he's really a storyteller or a poet that he puts things to music. And we didn't want to lose that. So I'm really pleased. I'm Absolutely. really pleased. And that's what I was getting ready to ask you is, I read that you write all of your material and they're all very, very personal to you. And I mean, to lose any meaning of that would be a shame. It would just be horrible. So the fact that you came out here and you trusted these musicians yeah. with your child, I mean, th- those are your babies, like you said. That, that's just, that's a, the risk worth, worth well, taking. Well, we made a, con- uh, made a decision when we came out here that we were gonna relinquish a lot of uh, what we thought it should be right and let them do what they wanted to do when he said we don't usually use these kind of chords in country music or uh or we need to cut that uh you don't need that third verse yeah. there and change it around we looked at each other said we're here we're gonna go with it <laughs> and let them do it and and it worked it, yes. it worked it's different from 
what I do. Okay. Uh, but the thing is, I have a Nashville version, and I so also have my version there you go. of the songs. There you One, go. One's more country, one's more pop. Now, see me, I might have panicked a little bit and had a little attack behind the scenes because <laughs> I don't handle change very well at all. And if I was dealing with something that was that personal to me and I saw it a certain way, to have it go any different would just be excruciatingly painful for me. And then you, when you're in there, everything's so fast. And, and we recorded and the, a session was over and I'm thinking, oh, that was just a little too slow. I mean... Mm. I, you know, I should have said, I did say something, but, you know, I should have said something again. So I, it bothered me the night we, uh, uh, before we went back again. And I was really uh, upset with myself because now I got to sing it at this tempo. And, <laughs> we and But we went into the studio and I said, it's really kind of slow. I wish we would have sped it up. And the and, uh, put, uh, engineer said, oh, we can do that in Pro Tools. Yeah. We just speed it up without changing the pitch. Yeah. I go, really? Nice. He hadn't recorded his vocals yet. Yeah, I didn't record yeah. my vocals yet. So well. we uh, clicked it uh, five uh, spots, five clicks. Five clicks, yeah. And it made it perfect. So that worked well, out well. See, they had a solution for they you. They had a solution. But the fact that you went back in and you were staying true to yourself and what you wanted, I got to give you credit yeah. for that because I think there's a lot of young musicians in this town who would never. They just, they're listening to what everybody's telling them and they right. they don't really allow themselves to have full creative control. And so I, I like that you went back in and was like, no, I yeah, really want to. Yeah, because even when way. we recorded it, uh, I said, yeah, it's too slow. We had to go back and right. re-record it again and do it again. Yeah. It cost money. But it worked out beautiful. It worked out well. Yeah. That, that's beautiful. Now, what else do you have going on? I mean, my goodness. You guys have been back and forth to Nashville, and you live out on the West, and I know it's yeah. you know kind of a well, long way to get here. A big thing that changed our lives mm -hmm. was last November, November 2019, when out of the blue I received a phone call mm. that uh, they wanted to award him singer songwriter of the year by the producer's choice honors and i thought oh we didn't apply for that did someone nominate him and he told me al bowman who's in charge of that in vegas mm -hmm. said no the year before i happened to be in a club in vegas and i heard john michael perform and he loved his songs yeah. and then when he was looking at all of the people that were nominated for male singer songwriter of the year he thought to himself you know, I like John's songs better. So he just decided oh, to wow. straight up give him the award. And uh, he went to the Madrid room in Vegas and performed his songs. And yeah. and that really changed a lot of things for us because we have a yeah. lot of local followers. Right. But uh, that just boosted everything. And everything went from one thing to another. And once people really heard his songs and saw his performance, it's... Uh, it's been a wild train. I love yeah, it. Yeah, and the, just the happiness that I see right now is pretty fantastic. I love it. And fans at home that are watching, you also have a Reverb Nation page where they can yeah. listen to even more music than what your EPs and, and such are, correct? Well, we, we have a, a called The Early Life. Now, what I used to do most of my life, ever since I was a little kid, I played in rock and roll bands, or I played in different kinds of bands, uh, uh, show bands, and uh, stage plays, and things, doing that kind of music. Right. And uh, I was touring for many years, and while well, she stayed home, and I came off tour one day, and I said, Pepper, I'm done. Oh, that was awful. I'm done. <laughs> I'm, you know, I don't want to <laughs> tour, I don't want to sing, I don't want to play guitar, right. I don't want to do anything. And she says, what are you going to do? And I said, I don't know. He did photography I did, for I, several I, years. So I started yeah. doing photography for several years. Very successfully. And, and, but uh, I put down the guitar and I didn't play anymore. And she came home one day uh, and she said, why don't you do your own songs, write and perform your own songs? Mm -hmm. And uh, I never really considered myself a writer, even though I had written songs before. But, you know, everybody writes a couple of songs. Um, do they, though? <laughs> And this was just before we moved to uh, Pahrump, mm -hmm. Nevada. Nevada. Yeah. And uh, I started dabbling in writing. But you know, we're living in Los, Los Angeles, LA. You know, you're distracted by so many oh, things. Yes. Just sounds and people. And mm -hmm. I mean, I really love it there. It was nice. I enjoyed my friends. But it's hard to focus on anything. Yeah. But when we bought the ranch in Pahrump, Nevada, I spent the first year with just me and the dog. While she came back forth on weekends, and there was nothing to do out there, 
you know, out in the desert. Mm -hmm. So I made up my mind, like, this is a good opportunity to really get into songwriting yeah. and maybe uh, get into the production of the, of the songs and build my little studio. And with that quiet, I seem to have tapped into something so magical I've never done before. That's great. And I started writing all these songs. And, and she would come and, and she would say, you wrote that? I go, yeah, isn't that amazing? I mean, it's like, I mean, it's like, yes, I did write it, but I really didn't write it. Mm -hmm. right. It's like we tap into mm -hmm. something, and I felt it. I felt that would, God would just be there and, and dictate to me what he wanted me to, to put on the paper. Mm -hmm. And it would be just like that. Yeah. And other times you I, were listening. Yeah. Because it was so quiet. You had, you had so the time quiet. and the, the place for the exact listening environment you needed. It was quiet. And mm -hmm. you could just hear and sometimes I would have uh, difficulties, got to be on my own, and I feel like he's watching me, and they, all right, you need some help, okay? <laughs> I'll help you out here. But I wrote uh, like a, a lot of songs, and, and then I got in the studio and started playing things and, and doing all the stuff, and sometimes I would turn to the piano and just one pass through, I'd be playing, I'd playing something like, I, oh my gosh, that string line, is where did that come from? Where, I didn't even know where that string line came wow. from. And it really tapped into something. Uh, so it's a magical thing. My early life is really was that. My early life, it includes a song that he wrote in 1966 when he was uh, in the Army in Vietnam. And that's the song that we've gotten in a lot of movies mm -hmm. that's been very popular, the Dust Off Association. The Dust Off is the military helicopter that picked up the military uh, dead and wounded during firefights. And it's a fabulous album, but it really reflects his experiences from a long time ago. Mm -hmm now and they're out everywhere on all music platforms reverb nation i use that to show off his unpublished songs and right. so we don't sell them so it's just up there for people to look at not download right. and they you know so people can oh i'll take this i like this for an artist and stuff so it's a right. nice platform and if we want to remix it or something we can put it right. up there and it has some of the published songs on there too but it's been a fab reverb nation they've been so uh -huh. wonderful to uh, allow musicians to do that right yeah. absolutely absolutely and, and the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about before we go, because I know we all have schedules, you have schedules, and I can't keep you here forever, even though I can talk to you forever. <laughs> um, you made the cover of Hollywood Monthly. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, Hi. success at, I'm, I'm 70 years old now. <laughs> I mean, who would have thought, I, this is what I wanted when I was a kid. Right. You know, but when you stop going after it, mm -hmm. and, and you just let things happen, and it comes to you, it's amazing. It's pretty you know. awesome. And I saw the side-by-side -side covers. I just thought that yeah, was pretty fantastic. And when the magazine came out, I thought, oh, here, I'm on the front page. And we opened it up, and there's like, oh, look at it. They gave me a whole page. Mm -hmm. And Pepper says, wait a minute. They gave you six pages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I didn't know it was that information. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. And that also opened up a lot of opportunities. We were asked to play for the L.A. Chargers at their at their headquarters. I mean, things wow. that we never even would have imagined doing. Well, it's not just his songs, it's his yes. performance yes. skills. They just love him to perform. Yeah. And we just feel so blessed. And the songs are coming out of him like, I mean, scores and scores of fabulous songs. It's really fun. I think that is incredible. I, I love this story. I'm in love with this story, you guys, because it really yeah. is just, it's just a feel good, you know, journey through your life. I mean, when you actually go online and you start researching, you know, it you've had so many amazing moments in your career and so many unexpected moments. Especially and, now. Yeah, and your reactions are just absolutely beautiful. I, I love it. And when you, I perform, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. once said, he said, Every performance, he says, is his collective life at that moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been performing on stage most of my life. And now I, I feel like I bring all that experience to each per, uh, moment when I'm on stage. Right. little story i tell you. So uh, many years ago, I was performing uh, on stage. And I was doing my whole act. And I was just telling my jokes and everything. <laughs> and and there's only one guy in the, in the whole bar. One guy in the bar, and he was sitting way down at the end. <laughs> and he looked up at me and go, hey, he says, take a break. I'm the only guy here. You don't have to perform for me. 
And I said to that guy, I said, as long as there's one guy in the audience, I'm doing my show. He got up and walked out. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I don't know if he felt guilty or he didn't like the show. I don't know. <laughs> well, who cares? That's a great story. That is just fantastic. But I do that. Every show, yeah. I, I give it all. Uh, if and it's one or two people or if it's a full house. Yep. You yep. know, if you come to see me, I'm going to give my whole life at that moment of yeah. what I do. I love I have a request. Sure. We, I think I had mentioned it to you earlier. Uh, we see, received a call about four months ago from Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and this girl was very excited. She says, I'm flying, I'm driving on the 405 freeway, and their John Michael song is on the radio. We were so excited. We were screaming and stuff. And then about two hours later, she says, I went to his YouTube channel, and you only have four subscribers there. <laughs> and I said, and I'm two of them. And so I realized I don't know anything about any of that. So right. John Michael Ferrari, please check out his YouTube channel. And a lot of you have, and I appreciate that. So yes. thank you. You guys need to subscribe, not just like videos. You need to subscribe to his channel, help give him some more followers, and then share it with your friends on all of your social media because you all know how to do that. Thank you so much. And you know what else we do? We started doing? What? Living room concerts. Oh, I love living room sessions. Yes, I, I come to your house. Uh, and, and you know we have a little gathering. They invite their friends, and uh, I do a little room, uh, like forty minutes or forty-five minutes, a, a little concert. Oh, yeah, we're doing three yeah. in Nashville. Yeah, we'll yeah. and then next time uh, I'm, I'm someplace, uh, uh, somebody who was in that audience, they go, "I want to have a living room, you know, uh, concert, yeah. and you know, just so uh, sit Very down personal. and yes. personal. It's really nice. It's well, fun." And that's what we were talking about before we started the interview was fans love the personal experience. Yes, they do. The private performances, the ability to talk to you, learn about you, and connect with you. I mean, that's what they want. You know, when you pay top dollar and you go to a stadium and you watch that person who's on the radio, they have no idea who you are. They have no idea who's there. They have zero clue as to what your name is or any of that and you go home after they're done performing there is no personal connection to them right. unless you pay gobs and gobs of money for a meet and greet backstage right. and even then it's like 10 seconds of time <laughs> like you know, <laughs> you know 10 seconds of one-on-one -on -one time as you get your picture taken with them so but it is a lot of fun because we yeah. get to meet the people i get to meet the people it's wonderful and, and we also at the ranch we teach how to do a uh, performance we teach young kids uh, singing and performing on stage. From right. all over the country. It's lovely. Yeah. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I know that you worked with a, a lovely young girl that we love, Allison Irajeda. Oh, yes. We love her. And, oh, yeah. you know, so, and I know that you worked with her when she was young. Well, she was our student from her 12th birthday yes. until her 17th birthday was actually on American Idol season eight. They had a nice birthday party from mm -hmm. her backstage and um, she came to the ranch to give us a thank you concert. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's so just, uh, we're still real close. And before yes. we, uh, she was, uh, went to American Idol, we used to, uh, Allison and I, we'd go down to Beverly Hills, uh, the farmer's market and we'd do busking. Yes. And oh then my get gosh! All these, uh, yeah. Private parties from it. it yeah, we really? do the busking and we get private parties and. Oh my goodness! Yeah, That's we used fun. to do that. There is just a tre treasure trove of stories right here that I just need to tap into after we stop these cameras, because this well, is just. Thank you so much. And it wasn't so about money. We we no. went down there and we did it for free. And one day I think we made like three over three hundred dollars in tips. I mean, we opened up my guitar case and then people come in there. But we, you know, and many times uh, we do performances and it's not, we don't get paid for it. Right. But they That's always the lead, but they yeah, always lead to other things, you know. <laughs> You right. never know. Well, that that's the whole thing is you just never know who's going to be watching. Just like with the gentleman who just, wanted to award right. you because he saw you playing in a club. Amazing. You yeah. know, I mean, so it's, it's a good testament to people to don't stop doing what you're doing. Don't stop doing what you love. And you never know. So just keep working. Don't give up. That's the main thing. And you know, not to give so up. Much. When he was in that club, uh, I remember because uh, we did the club and, and well, I have a band now that we perform with in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they said, well, nobody's gonna come and listen to you if you don't do cover songs. And I said, no. And I said, no, we're not gonna do cover, yeah. we're gonna do just my original songs. And all the band man members said, that nobody's gonna show up. <laughs> so we started playing some of the clubs uh, and uh, there wasn't anybody there. But slowly, the people yeah. came in, they started telling other people and other people, now I'm doing hour and a half shows. Full house. Full, uh, full house with just my music. Right. And people come in, they say, I haven't heard your music, but it sounds so 
commercial and happy and familiar. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. the thing. And I'll do an hour and a half show I love with the band. That. And three of the band members are doctors. Yeah. Well, you you <laughs> did you did do a cover for a special lady that you performed with and she liked your version of his her son's song. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want you to tell the story. I'm bad at giving clues, you guys. Uh, well, I don't remember oh. how many years ago it was, oh, yeah. but it was in a, a hotel ballroom in Los Angeles, and he was doing songs and one lady asked for a request she says will you do a neil diamond song he said would you do one of my son's songs and john says well who's your son and he said neil diamond it's like <laughs> the neil diamond it's like okay and when, after he finished she said well besides my son you do it best <laughs> oh i love that that, is, yeah. that had to be just one of the highlights of your career yeah. too knowing nice. that you know but so tell fans at home where they can find you on social media and your website. Well, johnmichaelferrari.com and from there links to Bands in Town. I love Bands in Town. Yes. Yeah. You know, some people don't know about it, but I do public speaking all over the United States yes. and you can go there and put your city in and you can see, you know, where the jazz is or where any kind of music you like right. is located. And um, so Bands in Town, John Michael Ferrari singer songwriter. Facebook, John Michael Ferrari, singer songwriter. Twitter, I think it's at Johnny Ferrari, and uh, Instagram, John Michael Ferrari, and all the regular suspects. And I'm not really good at social media, so I really appreciate <laughs> you guys starting to follow, tag, like, share, share, whatever it is that you're doing. We really, honestly, appreciate you a lot because on our own, I'd still have just those four subscribers for him. So thank you. <laughs> and it's funny because you go to Bands in Town. She said, "Go to Bands in Town. Check where uh, you know where you're playing." So I go to Bands in Town, and and then I open it up and it says Rod Stewart's playing in Vegas. Alton John's playing in Vegas. John Michael Ferrari's playing in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my oh my gosh! You know. <laughs> I'm on the same page, you know, just like. <laughs> Did you take a picture of that? See, oh, we should have. Oh, it'll happen again. Yes, it'll happen again. Yeah, it'll happen again. Yeah. That's, that's the kind of thing I take pictures of, and I'm like, look, look, I know this person, and look at who they're in company with. Yeah, like, I, yeah I love that that's stuff. Funny. That's funny. Yeah. You have to document and celebrate those moments yes, just because do. they're great. We're having a really good time, and yes, it's we just, uh, we're a good team. We work yes. well together. Yes, yeah. for 30 years. Yeah. That's <laughs> fantastic. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right, guys. Well, you know where to find them. So go to johnmichaelferrari.com. All of the links are there. Follow them on social media. And YouTubers, subscribe to their channel. Yeah. All right. Until next time, guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Missy.